The root of the word entrepreneur is French, and it means to take into one's own hands. And what, what we're most excited for, what, what I'm most excited for, is to see these entrepreneurs take this experience into their own hands. You know, they walk in with a certain idea of this is the way things are done, this is how I'm going to do things. And I think within this first week, we've seen dramatic paradigm shifts for a lot of the entrepreneurs. Some of them have already said, I'm completely changing my business. We're really starting to see the mentors challenge the entrepreneurs, and they're critically evaluating their ventures, giving them invaluable feedback and mentorship that these entrepreneurs really need to ensure that their ventures are successful. 25 brilliant entrepreneurs working on ventures in 17 countries and hailing from six continents will convene this summer in Boulder. Living under the same roof and sharing the same meals for 10 weeks, they have convened in Boulder this summer for one reason, to create ventures that future generations will remember as having changed the world. Ventures that will effectively address a social or environmental need, that are financially self-sustaining, and that will ultimately scale to meet the needs of at least one million people. It's no big deal. Since I arrived nearly three weeks ago, my brain's just been firing away. <laughs> the first thing I learned was the focus on impact and what's driving us was as entrepreneurs to achieve that. It's very easy to you know be working on the ground and getting caught up in the day to day, and um, you know you kind of have to come back to what what makes it so important for you to be doing that work. I'm representing Consla. Uh, which is a company that provides uh, affordable insulation to underserved markets in Pakistan. I, I went to Pakistan, I set up meetings at that point, I found, got a list of organizations that were involved in housing. I found myself spending a month and a half traveling between refugee camps and just talking to the people at that point and how instead of you know coming with a solution from outside, you focus on building local capacity and helping them or empowering them through design um, was a realization I came across. If you haven't talked to at least 25 real customers in some detail before you start, don't bother. Even like having the opportunity to sit down and have a cup of tea with people in these communities and share, I mean, they were sharing their problems with me and some of their needs and to, for them to be talking so candidly with a person who comes from a different part of Pakistan and actually wanting to collaborate is something what gets me really excited. If you're talking about an unreasonable idea, probably the biggest challenge is having the confidence in how important the idea is. One should be able to reach out to anyone and ask and try and get them involved. Just of course, the sort of confidence that they've built in again has makes makes me quite quite certain that I am unreasonable. A lot of people ask us, "What's our curriculum? What are we doing for ten weeks with these exceptional entrepreneurs?" And the entire institute, from start to finish, is mentor driven. We're a mentor intensive program. We're bringing 60 expert mentors, thought leaders, practitioners, investors, top entrepreneurs from around the world. We're bringing them here to convene on the Institute this summer. We want to be part of a community and a whole network that, that are challenging the status quo, are looking at brand new ways to do things, totally out of the box ways. Storytelling is how we communicate. From folks like Neil Baer, who is executive producer of ER and Law and Order, he comes in and he's talking about the importance of storytelling. And I don't think there's anybody more fit in the world to do that. With the exception of microfinance, nobody has made money off of a social enterprise. To Ross Baird, who's you know a managing partner in First Life Ventures, and he's administering the Unreasonable Village Fund, this incredible experiment of peer-to-peer -peer investment. When you listen, you have to learn to listen with your soul. To Paul Polak, who's credited for taking 24 million people out of poverty. Talking about how to scale up your venture and effectively meet the needs of the poorest people in the world. There's a lot of training and stuff happening in the first week. And the second week, there's a bit more free time to just go and, you know, informally, you know, sit down, <laughs> dance, do whatever, go out. There's buttons on his shoulders. Uh, Only the French can do uh, shoulder buttons. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think all the all the barriers were sort of down, and we just became like 
housemates and friends. We got back after the Ignite pitch and um, dinner was being served at that point. I'd gotten a lot of hugs during the day saying happy birthday, happy birthday. And after dinner, we were just kind of waiting outside on the patio and then they bring out this like massive cake. Okay. Don't. I've got itchy nose for some reason. No emotions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. Oh my god. Oh wow. It's my second or third birthday away from home, but the first time with so many people. You guys have been voted here by 3,000 people from around the world who said you should come here to launch these ventures, to create these companies, to create the impact that you've pledged, pledged to lead. You know, what is it going to take to create ventures that future generations will remember as having to find progress in our time? It's, it's going to take the eloquence of a poet, the precision of a mathematician, and the drive of a soldier. Good little reminder and a nudge from Daniel saying, "Hey guys, uh, the reason why you guys are here is to, you know, also work on your ventures." I just did a full three-year budget in two hours, and it came out to two point six million dollars. Leverage different players. You're really appealing to their marketing budget. These entrepreneurs are going to face a lot of challenges. I mean, I could rattle them all off, but why give away the surprise? <laughs> it's going to be tough, and it's always going to feel like doors are closing and doors are closing, and people aren't getting what you're saying, and it doesn't make sense, and that you just have to push forward, because there's many times I wanted to give up and say, oh, this isn't just, just not working. We're, we're sitting there in the sun, the mountains in the background, you know, and then suddenly the topic of you know money comes up and not just money but competition and money. Well I wanted to talk to you um, first specifically about the village capital program that y'all are uh, part of here at the Unreasonable Institute. The village capital program is based off of one premise and that is that you are as capable of supporting each other and deciding whether each other has a good business as I am as an employee of an investment firm. All of you will rank one another or vote on one another and whoever gets the most support from their peers will get a $75,000 investment from First Light Ventures. Our hope is that you can structure this program in a way that it will be more cooperative than competitive. Some of the most important work that's being done in the world is happening um, here at the Unreasonable Institute and those people who are working their butts off to make a difference could come out the other side of this with a chunk of funding that will really take their project to the stars. It was really transparent. It's like, look, there's two lots of $75,000 up for grabs here. $75,000 is a lot of money for, um, for most of these ventures. We just, we just started our pilot three weeks ago. The cost of the pilot is around $22,000. We have $11,000. So $75,000 could help us pay our staff and finish our pilot um, without any stress. Uh, the question is, will a group of entrepreneurs who are intimately incubated with each other over the course of 10 weeks do a better job of selecting the most viable investments than an outside investor would? 